kind of funny. I was here this morning. She asked me the question on the way back from Eola, Kentucky, what I was going to preach on, and I said, I don't know. And uh, uh, and uh, but the Lord's taking me back to these verses, Pastor Bill, and I don't know exactly what all God's going to do with it, but He does. First of all, I like to get informal. Second of all, I like to let people know that I am just a man and I have faults and failures. And that I'm nothing important, Sister Sheila, that I don't. Just blessed, humble to be used by God. Uh, nothing, and nobody. nothing and nobody without it. Amen. And uh, but I know because of what I've been told, and I know because of what the Spirit is telling me that there's people in here tonight that need to hear this, Pastor Bill. You say, Sean, there ain't nobody here much. Well, fine. But at least one, if not every one of us, needs to hear this. Come on. I need to hear it myself. And uh, uh, even though these verses are the same verses that I used this morning, I got a strong, strong feeling that this is not going to go in the same direction as it did this morning. And we pick up in chapter 6. We pick up in chapter 6, and we start reading down around verse 24. But chapter 6, the Lord feeds the 5,000 with the two fish and the five loaves. And that's 5,000 men, uh, besides women and children. And uh, the evening comes, and Jesus goes up in the mountain by itself. And the disciples get in a boat. And they sail on across the sea to the other side. At least they're trying. And in the middle of the night, here comes Jesus walking on the water. And they get to the other side, Jesus and the boys do, and we pick up in verse 24. He said, When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither His disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, Seeking after Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? And I, I thought it was interesting to know that they asked him a question. They said, When did you come? But Jesus didn't answer the question. At least not what they were after. They wanted to know one thing, and he let them know. Something else. You ever had God do that to you? You ask Him one thing and that's not at all, Brother Robbie, what He gives you. And He says, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek Me, not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Did you get that? The Lord said, you didn't seek me because I'm the Son of God. He said, you didn't seek me because that I could save your souls. He said, but you seek me because I give you something of this world. And He said, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who hath sent me. Excuse me. That ye believe on him whom he hath sent. In other words, God said, The work of God is for you to believe that I'm Jesus. 
to believe that I am the Messiah, to believe that I am sent. They said, Therefore unto him, What sign, here we go again, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? In other words, prove to me that we ought to believe on you. Did y'all totally miss what they just did? The same group of people that were fed with five loaves and two fishes, the same 5,000, at least in part, had crossed the sea after him. And he says, the Lord wants you to believe on the one he sent. And they said, prove to us. Prove to us that you're God. Uh, that you're the Son of God. Prove to us that you're the one that He has sent. And He's like, you know what? You're not following me because you've seen my power. You're following me because of what I can do for you. And that just really stuck out to me this morning when I read that. And, uh, and the Lord keeps, I don't know, he, somehow that keeps coming back up a little bit. And, and we'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. They had already seen a miracle. Come on. They'd already seen a miracle, Bill. I serve a big God, Sister Diane. I serve a God, Brother Robbie, that spoke it all into existence in seven days. Amen. From beginning to end, he said that there be light made the earth, and I mean all those things. That's how big my God is. I serve a God that parted the Red Sea and that parted the River of Jordan. I serve the God, Sister Missy, that flooded the whole world in a 40-day period and wiped it all out except for eight people and a boatload of animals. I serve a God whose prophets call fire out of heaven and whose disciples raised the dead. I serve a God whom the shadow of his followers would heal people when they walked by. I serve that kind of God. But you know what the greatest miracle that we ever see is? Salvation. For all the blinded eyes that are opened and all the lame that walk and all the marriages that are healed and, and all those things that are done, Sister Sheila, the greatest miracle that we see, the greatest miracle that we see is salvation. And if we've ever seen true, genuine salvation, Brother Robbie, if we've ever seen it or we've ever felt it, then God has already showed us the sign. He no longer has to prove anything to us. And uh, and they go on to say to him, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. It's a somber spirit in Him tonight. Sweet and serious. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven. But my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is He which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Do you hear that? That's the bread of heaven. Then said they unto Him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Come on. Did you hear that? He said if the Father give them to me, I ain't getting rid of them. That's pretty good. Come on. Amen. Now if I want to get away, that might be a different story. But as long as I want to hang on, Brother Robbie, he's going to hang on with me. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of Him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me. Do you hear that? He said, this is Come His on. will. 
He said, well, oh, he said, it's your will that you believe me. And he said, now this is your will that had, this is his, another part of his will. That all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again Come on. at the last day. Boy, ain't that beautiful? He said, you know what, even yeah. those that sleep, he ain't losing them, Brother Robbie. And this is the will of him that sent me. Again, he said it. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Boy, ain't that beautiful? Come on. I like it, 41, where it says, The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Yeah, think about that a minute. Hold on, i got to get that. Peppermint in my mouth. If you like how I've done that in the microphone, so you can hear the plastic, sorry. The, uh, I don't know, you might as well laugh, Sheila. It's all right to laugh. The, uh, I am that bread from heaven. I'm going to chase a rabbit for about 30 seconds. There's a lot of people in the world that can't stand it, Brother Bill, when we talk about Jesus being the way, the truth, and the light. There's a lot of people that murmur and complain because we call Him the bread of heaven. There's a lot of people, Sister Missy, that don't want to hear it. There's a lot of people that want to deny Brother Robbie. There's a lot of people, Brother Kyle, that don't want anything to do with it, that just wants to stay away from it. And they get upset if you bring up the name of Jesus. It's all right to have some kind of God, but you can't have just Jesus. Come on. You can't have just one way. They want a big compromised conglomerate, and they get Come they on. get upset because they call it the bread from heaven. But I'm going to tell you something: that if you want peace and satisfaction in your life, then you're going to have to have the bread from heaven. Come on. He told the woman at the well. He said, if you drink of this water, he said, you ain't never going to thirst again. And he said, I told him right there, he said, if you eat of this bread, you ain't going to hunger no more. And you think about that. Because see, we live in a world, Brother Robbie, that needs to know about the peace of God. That needs to know about the satisfaction of Jesus Christ. I like what he said in John 14, 27. And I'm going to go read that and we're going to tie all this together probably with the book of Exodus. In 1427, he said, Peace, this is Christ talking again. But you listen, this is beautiful. Peace I leave with you. Come on. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth. Come on. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Mm. In Exodus 16, we find, Brother Bill, that they were wandering in the wilderness. That they were in a lost world, being led around by a leader. And they didn't have what they needed. And they began to murmur and complain. And God said, I'll feed them, Brother Robbie. And He said, I'll give them enough to get them from day to day. And he poured manna out on the ground and quail coming to the camp every night. And they would gather enough to eat. And we live in a world right now that has no peace. And they're wandering around in the wilderness, Brother Bill. And they murmur and complain because there's bad things happening. Because things ain't going right. Because their soul is dissatisfied. We've got all kinds of Christians in our church houses, Brother Robbie, that are suffering. That are not able to really thrive in God. That don't even know what way is up on some day, Sister Missy. And glory to God, it's because that we're in a wilderness. And we're not eating from what God has provided us. We're not eating from the manna of heaven. Somebody ought to hear me tonight. Glory to God. And we're suffering and we're longing and we're drying up and we're thirsting to death because if we don't have the peace that Christ left behind. Oh. He said, I give you my peace. I leave it with you. But I don't give you what the world gives you. I want you to notice that in John 14, 27. He said that. He said, I don't give you what the world gives you. He said, I give you peace and I leave it with you. But not what the world gives you. Not as the world gives you. The Lord had me use this example this morning, and I'll use it again. The world gives me a Visa card with a big interest payment. Yeah. 
The world gives me a nice new vehicle with a big car payment. Yeah. The world gives me a big house with a big loan payment. Yeah. Come on. The, the world gives me a high paying job with a whole bunch of taxes. Yeah. The world gives me clothes that wear out and food that I won't even use. The world gives me all these things and it tries to satisfy me, but I am still walking around in the wilderness, Brother Bill. I'm still wandering around, Brother Robbie, lost without any leadership and without nothing to actually sustain my soul. If they were walking in fertile ground, when they were in the wilderness, they would have still been starving to death because they was not eating the bread of heaven. For all the things we have in the world, I am not satisfied in the world because the world is wilderness. The world, well, did I go this route? I'm going to make a bold statement. The world belongs to Satan. What? God's in there working. He's saving people. Agree. Ephesians chapter 6 refers to Satan as the prince of the power of the air. You know what that means? He called him the, the ruler of everything from the ground to the sky. What did Satan offer Jesus? On the third temptation, he took him to a high spot in the world and he let him overlook all the kingdoms of man. And he said, they're all in my hand to give you if you'll just bow down to me. I don't know God's down here and I know we're going to come into judgment. But this world, come on, this world belongs to Satan. If it didn't belong to Satan, the Lord wouldn't fry it. Can you say amen? Come on, he has a tendency not to cook those things that are his. I just, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the Hebrew children belong to him and they didn't get cooked. I know that's a far stretch, but you know what I'm driving at. I don't find that his people got cooked. You even look at John the Apostle. If you read what history teaches, they dropped him in a vat of bowling hot oil and he didn't die. Come on. That's what, not the Bible, but that's what history, history. historians teach us. That they, look, the Lord don't fry His own things. The Lord cooks what in His. Sodom and Gomorrah. This world, there was a bunch of people who stood against Moses and Aaron, and he came out of the tabernacle and killed a whole swarm of them. Amen? He's going to cook His earth. Amen. Now we realize it might be at some little piece down the road, whenever. And the prophets in Revelation said fire would come out of the mouth. So if this world belongs to Satan, then there's no satisfaction in the world. Can you say amen? You think about that tonight. There's no satisfaction in the wilderness. There's none at all. But God done something great in the wilderness. God done something beautiful in the wilderness. Just like He does something great, Sister Diane, in the world. Every day, He poured manna out of heaven upon the earth. And He told, He said, and you go back and read Exodus 16. And 16.4 is a good place to start. And he told them, he said, I'm going to give them a man out of heaven. And he tasted like honey, maybe looked like some barley wafers or something, just really flat, white, powdery type stuff. And they'd get it, they'd make bread with it. Mix what's it, tasted like honey, it's good. If you look up the word manna in one place, it even indicates that it, the word meant, what is it? In other words, they, that was a word for hunt. What's that? You know, and they didn't know what it was. What, what is it? And sometimes God feasts us with things we don't know what it is, but that's another message. And they would go out every day. He told them, he said, you get out of bed every morning before the sun rises. And he said, you gather up. I think he told them it was an omer. 
And I, I looked it up the other day, and don't hold me to this, but I believe it was about a half a gallon per person. Now, if you had a lot of people in your house, you had to give more. But everybody got out and gave it their own. If they's able. Come on. Did you hear that? Everybody got out and gave it their own. That's important. You need to hang on to that. And they get down on the ground, Brother Bill, down on their knees, and they get they take their little pot or their little bowl, whatever it is, basket, yeah, and they gather that up, Sister Diane. They gather what they needed. And he said, You get what you need. And he said, You don't get more than what you need. Because if you have anything left over by tomorrow, it ain't gonna be no count. He said it's gonna spoil. He told Paul, Paul said, I have prayed three times for this thorn to be removed from my side. And he said, the only answer I got is my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, the Lord said, I'm giving you what you need to get through. And yeah, I know, I'm kneeling in the middle of the aisle, but I'll get up eventually. And they'd go out and they'd gather what they needed every morning. See, because when the sun come up and the dew melted off, the manna would melt away, Brother Robbie, and there wasn't none there. You couldn't gather it in the evening. Come they on. had to prepare it in the morning. Come on. Thank you, Lord. And they'd go out and they'd scoop up what they had to have, sister, and they'd take it back and they'd mix it with a little water and they'd bake them up and they'd have their sustenance for the day. And the Lord told them, He said, you'll have what you need. You'll not have more than you need, and you'll not have less than you need, but you'll have what you need. Wait a minute. Here we are in the wilderness. We're talking about manna from heaven. But Jesus just, and that was a form of bread, okay? And Jesus just said that Moses didn't give us that bread from heaven, but that he was that bread from heaven. Wait a minute. Do you see where that's going, Pastor? That's going to say this. Is that every day the Lord will provide me enough bread from heaven for me to be sustained. Now, I know we talked about our cup running over. I'm not taking away from that. Talk about just metaphorically living through the day at the moment. All right? But he said that he'll give me what I need, Sister Diane. Not what I want. Not more than I need. Not less than I need. But he'll give me what I need. Oh, glory. Lord, did you hear that? Wait a minute. Don't let me forget to come back to peace. Yeah, let's talk about peace now. He said, peace I leave with you. Peace I leave with you. But I don't give you as the world gives you. You know why the world, he don't give that? Because what the world gives runs out. What the world gives leaves us wanting. Listen, I'm going to make a bad joke. Get you all on board with me here. You ever eat Chinese and then 30 minutes later you're hungry again? Y'all ever heard that? You know what I'm talking about? People talk about they'll go to them Chinese buffets and they'll eat until they fall over and they walk out 30 minutes later and they're back hungry again. See, that is what the world does. The world gives us enough to, to make us think we're full, but we're really not satisfied. We're hungry before long. I get a new car, I need another one. I get a new house, I need another one. I need new clothes, I need more. The world provides me with more stores and I know how to shop in Amen? I go down to the mall sometimes, me missy don't go off, and I go down there and I look around and I see these stores, I'm like, I never heard of that place. And I think, how in the world is there that many people to buy all them clothes? You know? I mean, it just blows my mind. Of course, I'm pretty sheltered, I guess, but, you know, the world has all this stuff, but it leaves us hungry. But now my mother, I'm going to use my mommy, because she used to cook with lard. And then she started cooking with short, and now she cooked the vegetable but that's the whole thing. She's going back to Lord. And she'd fix a meal, Brother Robbie. 
And she fed day six of us, counting mom and dad, there's four of us children. And that woman would fry five pounds of bacon for breakfast. Yeah. What'd you say, Diane? That's a lot of bacon. Yes, it is. Mom would fix five pounds of bacon. Man, good thick BLT. Yeah, man, we'd have BLTs for dinner sometimes or breakfast. Lord have mercy. I mean, they were just big. And let me tell you, my mom would make a spread, and she'd fix a, a baked chicken or a meatloaf or a pot roast, and that thing would be several pounds and potatoes and carrots running over it, and they'd be green beans and corn and cornbread, and she always made a cornbread in that same black pan that she still uses that's about ready to break on the side because she's using some... Does it have a hole in the bottom? She's grieving because she's going to have to break in a new bread pan. You, you, you think they married 50 years using the same bread pan, and Mom would make that pound of cornbread, and we and I drink a half a gallon of milk myself, and they and nothing ever ran out. Come on, you hear me? We six of us would sit down at that table, and we'd start heaping stuff on our plate, and we'd eat, and Daddy would eat, and June would eat. Let me tell you something. Between my sister and my two brothers, we could put it away, man, and we would we would stuff ourselves, and we would leave that table, and we wasn't hungry. And 30 minutes later, we wasn't hungry. And four Four hours later, we wasn't hungry. Do you hear what God is saying tonight? The world offers us a lot of really nice food with a lot of really nice presentation, but there ain't no sustenance, and there ain't no satisfaction, and there ain't no peace. But God offers us something that we can't get out of the world. And God offers us something that the wilderness can't provide. And God offers us meat that is marrow for our bones and fat for our bodies. And God offers us water that won't let us thirst and bread that won't let us get hungry. And we can pour ourselves over it and we can stuff ourselves with it. And you know what, Brother Robbie? We don't get tired and we don't get weary. Glory to God. And we get satisfied. He even told him in the wilderness when he brought him out, he said, you've been in here 80 years. They stayed 40, got in trouble with God and pulled another 40. Yeah. yeah. They went up to Canaan. Spies went up and said, we can't take it. Well, so we can't take it. And the Lord said, you're going to die out here because you can't take it. Because he wouldn't believe me that you could. Come on. And so the old generation died off and the new ones went in except for Joshua and Caleb. Even Moses didn't go. And he told them when he brought them out in the book of Joshua, he said, I've brought you out. And he said, your clothes have not worn out. And your shoes ain't worn out. And he said, you've always had what you needed to eat and drink. Now you think about being 80 years and your clothes not wearing out. Son of a gun, we won't even wear them 10 times hardly without buying new. And their clothes never wore out. See, God took care of them. God took care of them and gave them everything they needed. And you know what? After you eat one of those big satisfactory meals, you know how it is eating turkey. We was over at Little Dove Church this morning for the bedwell, and they had their Thanksgiving dinner. It was halfway between Christmas and Thanksgiving, so it was Thanksgiving dinner. And they had turkey and all the trimmings. And boy, let me tell you, he's got some good... He said when he went to preach at this guy's church, Brother Verdell was there this morning. He said he went to preach at Brother Verdell at Verdell's church. Brother Verdell said, now, Brother Bebo, you can preach on anything you want except one thing. He said, what's that? He said, gluttony. He said, you might offend my cooks and run them off. And he said, I'll starve to death. You better do that. <laughs> Brother bebo has got some good cooks. And let me tell you, we eat. And you know what happens when you get full and you get satisfied? You want to curl up somewhere and you, you, your body's at peace. And you're relaxed and you're satisfied. And you just want that sweet peace. You just want to curl up and sleep in that sweet peace. Wait a minute. The bread of heaven, the bread of heaven just said in 1427, he said, I give you peace. Do you hear that tonight? He said, I give you peace. You see, when you eat of that bread of heaven, there's peace. When you eat of that bread of heaven, there's satisfaction. But he said, I don't give you as the world gives you because what the world gives us expires, ruins, goes away, and we're left wanting and hungry. 
You, you know what happens? Lord, this ain't, but I'll do it. I'll, use, I'll go back to my Chinese buffet, if you will. I like Chinese. I'm not picking on it. It's just a good reference point. We could use junk food if you want to. Sometimes I'll eat, I'll eat a lot of fast food or a lot of junk food because I'm busy and I just ain't satisfied with it. And so I'll, I'll devour better than a half a bag of Doritos by myself. And I don't mean one of them. I mean, I'll take down half a and Pepsi, you know, but I'm not, I, two or three hours later, I'm looking for more. And two or three hours later, I'm looking for more. And I'll get me some more junk and I'm looking for more. We do the same thing on a Chinese buffet, Sister Sheila. And we start packing that stuff in, trying to satisfy our bodies. Try to take care of this hunger, this need, this, this uh, angst on the inside of us. And, and we all know what happens when we eat too much. The old comedian, I think he passed away last year. He was a great old big guy. And he was talking about when he went to the Chinese buffet and they tried to run him off. And that, old, that, that guy at the buffet said, why are you so big? You need to eat more vegetables. I said, you scared my wife. And uh, he said, you, you need to go. And, uh, and, and, and we do that. We, we, we get so much of the world, just like from a buffet of food, and when we overeat, we, we, start, to, we start to gain weight, and we start to, we start to become uncomfortable, and we get, we get bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, we have so much of the world on us, and we're swollen and bloated with so much of the world that we're not happy, Brother Robbie, and we're not healthy people, and we're actually dying on the inside. Yeah. And still we're hungry. And still we pack things in. And still we look for the satisfaction. But yet it is not there. Can you hear what God is saying tonight? But when you eat that bread of heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Little baby life is awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's God. That's beautiful. When you eat that bread of heaven, you're satisfied. When you eat that bread of heaven, you're healthy and you're at peace. Oh, glory to God. I want to eat that bread of heaven, Pastor Bill. I want to eat that bread of heaven. Because see, Lord, let's go back and read 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Did you hear that? Neither let it be afraid. Let not it be troubled. You get that you get that big old full belly and you just you just want to curl up and go sleep. You don't care what's going on around you. Your heart ain't troubled. It don't matter. That that turkey's got that stuff in it, it makes you sleepy and you get your belly full of turkey, brother Robin, you can sleep through a war. Yeah. You know, your heart ain't troubled, your mind's at peace. Glory to God. And you get what he done there, don't you? He did, he give them peace. He give them bread in the wilderness. In the world, we can find that kind of peace, a peace that surpasses all understanding. What a beautiful thing! Come on. We can find peace in the wilderness. Peace, satisfaction, Sister Sheila, in the wilderness. Say, but Sean, I've got problems. And I'm going to say, Amen. And you say, What? I'm going to say, Amen. The people in the wilderness, the people of Israel, were following God, Bill. Their needs were met. They had food. They had water. They had raiment. But it didn't change the fact, Brother Robbie, they were still in the wilderness. They were still stuck in the world. They still had problems. They still had problems. We all going to have problems, Brother Robin. That don't make them easy. 
Here's one of the worst things I think was ever said. And I, I probably said it at some point in time in my early walk with God. But if you get God, you won't have no more problems. If you get God, there won't be no more issues. He'll be ever, you know, you know what we used to do. We, we've, Sister Diane's been around this thing a little while, so is Brother Bill, so is Brother Robbie. We, you all probably heard that preached. Oh, yeah. You know? God will take it all away. Listen, God might forgive you, but the state of Kentucky won't. No, ain't God might forgive you, but the IRS won't. No, you know what I'm saying? No. You're still going to have problems. Yeah. Everybody in the church house is going to have problems. Yeah. But glory to God, if we will eat of the bread of life while we're in the wilderness, we will have peace. So, I really guess I have to say this. Do you want me to go there? Come on. Come on. When did they gather their men? When did they gather their bread? They gathered it in the morning, Brother Robbie, before the sun came up, before the dew melted away with the sun. Let's scratch our heads, man. Gotta figure that out. They are down on their knees in the morning before the sun comes up. With their bowl, gathering bread. Man, you know what my bowl is, don't you? That's my heart. When the sun comes up, Sister Diane, it's hard for me to get anything done with God at that point because by the time I get moving, Brother Bill, my family's up and moving, I'm up and moving. Me and Missy's got the kids out of bed, we got them down the road. I come home, I take a shower, I get a cup of coffee. Uh, I go to work, and my day is destroyed from that moment on. There's no more normality to the rest of my days, Sister Shane. Missy can tell you, some of my days, they just ain't a bit of control to them at all. And I am a control freak, and I do not like being out of control. So once I leave the house in the morning, my day is shot. You hear what I'm saying? So if I don't get my bread from heaven before I begin my work for the day, then I don't get none. Amen? I don't get it, Sister Missy, if I ain't out of bed gathering before my day begins because when the heat of the day comes and we start working, we can't gather no more manna. The opportunity has been, I'm not saying... You know it's metaphorical. I'm not saying you can't pray through the day. I'm not saying you can't feel God through the day. I, it, 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 don't read too much into that. But you all know how it is. When y'all get up and get going in the day, you, you're too busy to do anything else, and you know it. Don't even act like you ain't, because you know you are. And I'm going to tell you something else, just like he told them. Uh, you can't double read on Wednesday night and be satisfied for Thursday and Friday. It don't work that way. You can't pray enough on Thursday morning to be all right come Friday afternoon. It don't work that way. You've got to eat your bread every day. The only time they could get a devil was on the Sabbath. On the day before the Sabbath. That's right, because they weren't supposed to work on the Sabbath. And let's not even go there because most of us worked on the Sabbath, but we're not going to go there. That's a whole other topic for a whole other day. But that means, and if you think about that right now, He gives me enough today for what? Today. God gives me enough for today, Sister Sheila. And, and, and it might be three verses today or three chapters tomorrow. But I've got to gather what I need when I pray. And when I read, and see, if I'm gathering bread in my heart, then I need to pray a little bit that God will open my understanding and that prayer would be the water and together I get my food and I eat. Because the Word without God ain't a whole lot of good. So the bread without water just kind of chokes you. 
and you get you can't you don't get anything. I gotta have a lot to drink when I eat. You know, and there ain't nothing worse than getting something hung that's dry in your mouth and you can't get it to go down. You know what I'm talking about? Please. Been there. Please. You can't. You know, and we, we try to read the Word that way, Brother Bill, and when you read the Word without the Spirit of God involved, without prayer involved, then all you do is choke yourself to death with it. Yeah. You don't accomplish anything. But when you read and pray every day before the day starts, Lord to God, do you hear that? He said, gather your manna in the morning. And what did Christ say? He said, Moses didn't give you the bread of life. He said, I am the bread of life. How many of you want peace today? Huh? How many of you want peace? I got one. Got two. Can you do it? Yes, you can. You got Warren back there. For the third uh, Sunday in a row, I believe we'll pull this song up. Seems to fit the whole thing, doesn't it, Pastor Bill? I want peace tonight. I want that bread of heaven, Brother Robbie, so that I can have peace. That message ain't directed at nobody in particular. I just know that God laid it on my heart to preach it that way. Very similar to what the Lord had me preach this morning. I'm always uncomfortable doing those two in a row things, but God knows what needs to be done. And... Uh, And I'm going to tell you tonight that if there's something in your life that you need, if there's bread out of heaven that you want to get a hold of, I want you to come. I'm going to ask you to come to the altar if you're able to come tonight. If you're wanting peace from God. If you need salvation, rededication, if you need prayer, if you need healing, I want you to come and pray at this altar if you're able. 